Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Uh, our text foundational scripture was whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We talk about uh, the victorious lifestyle of faith. And uh, the first thing we talked about when you're having problems or going through issues or things you're dealing with in your life is that we recognize the source. Satan is the source of the problem. Uh, he may not be directly responsible. I mean, if you jump off a building and break your leg, I mean, that's, that's stupidity. But <clears throat> trust me, that was his inspiration to do that. Okay. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you might have life, have it more abundantly. <clears throat> or some translations say, have it to the full. And then 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says that, that Satan is our adversary, going about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And then we talked about how that God is our, our source of victory, that he always causes us to triumph through Christ. Amen. That we always triumph through Christ. Amen. God is our refuge. God is our fortress, a very present help in trouble. So we talked about that. So the next, the next step on our, on our journey of faith in living a victorious life is of recognizing the source of the problem, the source of the answer, is to be sure that the promises of God cover the things you ask for, the things you're dealing with. Let's look, if we will to the 10th chapter of the book of Romans, looking down into verse 17. Hallelujah. And we can really back up a verse or two. Uh, verse 13 says, For whosoever, that means you, shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? You don't win, you get sent. So if you're not sent, don't win. All right? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they've not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah, or Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? That's Isaiah 52. Or, verse, or actually Isaiah 53, verse 1. And uh, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So if you're going to live by faith, if you're going to get answers by faith, you're going to have to find promises from God's word that cover what you're dealing with. If you don't have the promise of God's word, there's no faith to deal with it. Okay? And so we need to understand that. And so then we go over to 2 Peter chapter 1, very good scripture, 2 Peter chapter 1, hallelujah, we just may as well start in verse 1, Simon Peter, a servant of the, and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And so here we have exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of the divine nature. God's word allows us to partake of his divine nature, take, partake of his life, partake of his victory, partake of his uh, ability, of his power. The divine nature of God we partake of through the promises of God. 
It is through the word of God that we're able to obtain things. It is through faith that's brought by the word of God that empowers us to live victoriously. It is through faith that the word of God's word produces in us. <clears throat> so when you're dealing with something, we have to deal with it through the exceeding great precious promises of God. We have to deal with it by an understanding that we have to have the promises of God to cover what we're dealing with. In other words, if you're dealing with sickness and disease, you need healing scriptures. But not just, you know, you need to know not just the reference, you need to know the scripture. The reference isn't anointed. It is there as a marker to help you find it. It is not a substitute for the actual scripture. Okay? So if you know, according to 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes, and see, so you got to at least quote the part that produces faith. Amen. And so if you're looking at something, you need to deal with something. You know, we've we got to find promises that deal with it. When we find the scripture reference, quote the, the scripture, not the reference. Because there's where the power is. Jesus didn't open up the book to the prophet Isaiah and go, well, you know, according to Isaiah, you know, you're blessed. He found the place where it was written and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He began to quote it, read it. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes out of the Word of God. It is produced in us by the Word of God. It is not produced in us by saying, well, you know, I'm, I'm healed because 1 Peter 2.24 says so. What does 1 Peter 2.24 say? When you quote the actual Scripture is when you are releasing power to produce faith in you and releasing the power of that Scripture. Amen. And it's fine to have the references memorized so you can go find it quickly. But understand the power is in the Word itself. And everybody gave me a hearty amen. amen. And your Bible hit it for me. All right, all right. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, if you will, over to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. <laughs> I love 2 Corinthians chapter 1 out of these different translations. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. Well, we better back up to verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel with the wisdom, uh, with the wisdom of words, not, I'm sorry, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of, this, of the wise. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, I'm thinking that doesn't add... That didn't work with my sermon. Sorry. 2 Corinthians 1.18. Totally blew that one. Turned to the wrong book. That's still a good passage, but just not, didn't work for what we're talking about. 2 Corinthians 1.18. But as God is true, our word or our preaching was towards you was not yea and nay. But as God is true, and our, I'm sorry. Uh, but as, as God is true, our word was not toward you, yea and nay. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus <coughs> and Timothy, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises of God in, uh, in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now he would establish you. Uh, establish us with you in Christ, hath anointed us, is God. Let me read this to you out of the Weymouth and the Amplified Bible. I particularly, I particularly like the Weymouth. As certainly as God is faithful, our language towards you is not now yes and now no. For Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he who was proclaimed among you by us, that is by Silas and Timothy and myself, did not show himself a waverer. I, like, I just love that. I love that. A waverer between yes and no. But it was, and always is, yes, with him. For all the promises of God, whatever their number, have their confirmation in him. And for this reason, through him, also our amen. And what does the word amen mean? So be it. It is a, it is a word of acknowledgement or agreement. Okay? We, I know we use it in church sermons, and we just say amen. And sometimes you say amen when, not, when you shouldn't be saying amen. The devil's a bad devil. Amen. He's been after me all week. Amen. Open the door and they just drive right in. That's just. 
Hallelujah. You know, it's tough being a Christian. Amen. 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 <laughs> Got the hankies out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Let me back up. For all the promises of God, whatever their number, have their confirmation in him. And for this reason, through him also, our amen acknowledges their truth and promotes the glory of God through our faith. Hallelujah. That's Weymouth translation. New Testament in modern English or modern speech. Uh, Francis Weymouth. Awesome translation. Amen. I just love that. This particular one. If I didn't have Weymouth for anything else except this one verse, it'd be good. Amen. God's promises are yes. They're not yes and no. God doesn't waver. God doesn't go, well, let me see. I know I promised that. But, you know, I'm, really, I'm just not in the mood to do that this week. I'm not going to honor what I said because, you know, I'm God and I can do whatever I want to do. And I just took a whim. Karen asked for it. Karen's not going to get it because I'm God. All the promises of God had their yes, had their confirmation in him. Amen. And our amen, so be it, promotes the glory of God through our faith. Praise God. Amen. So his promises already have a stamp of yes on them. I said all the promises of God already have the stamp of yes on them. Why? That's why God promised them. He promised them because he intended to do them. When our faith was involved, when our faith activated and brought that to our life, God's intention was to bring it to pass. Remember, he said over in Isaiah, he says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of mouth. Well, look over there in Isaiah 55. Let's go over there. Hallelujah. Verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways Saith the, or your ways, my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now, you're going to have people jump in here, pull this out, and say, see, just because you can't understand what God's doing by making, giving you cancer and trying to kill you doesn't mean anything because his ways are higher than your ways. Well, let's take the whole thing in context because he didn't stop there. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it to bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be. So shall my word be. You see, you just can't take verse 8 and 9 and run off with it and make something out of it that it's not there. God said that the ways that are higher and the thoughts that are higher are vested in his word. His word declares and describes the ways that are higher and the thoughts that are higher. So you can't go out and say, well, you know, you got cancer and God's ways are higher than our ways. You just don't know what's going on. And your little peanut brain is so, is so fine, I ain't so small. You just can't figure it out. God's got higher ways and higher thoughts. Therefore, figure it out. I mean, just put up with it. God will teach you something. That's, but that's not what God said. God says his ways are higher, his thoughts are higher. And then he's talked about that the rain comes down from heaven, the snow, and don't return to the other. So shall his word be. So we understand the higher ways and the higher thoughts by what his word says. His word is a description of the higher thoughts and the higher ways. So we live according to the word. We get it from the word. We just don't make up stuff and, and run off with it and try to figure, you know, and think, well, that's it. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper whereto I, in the thing whereto I sent it. Hallelujah. And so we have here this passage from verse 8 uh, down through verse 11. He goes, he goes on and talks about some other things, but this is really where we're at, these four verses. That the word of God is what we need to cover our circumstances. The word of God is a higher way than, see, now you'll try to figure out stuff and figure out how to fix it, and you won't be able to fix it because your flesh and your brain just can't figure it out. It's limited. 
There's a limitation to your ability to accomplish God's will and God's purpose and God's thoughts and God's ways with your abilities. We have to have the, the higher ways and the higher thoughts vested in us. And if you're going to receive and live the life of gaining and living and the overcoming faith, the faith that overcomes the world, just like we have a here on this wall. Been that there for a number of years. This is the victory that overcome with the world, even our faith. If we're going to live there, we're going to have to find promises that cover what we're believing God for. Amen. So our confession must be word-based. Amen. What we say, what we declare, what we're speaking must be word-based. Okay? And let's make sure it's word-based. Hallelujah. Let's not say things that we think are word-based. Let's make sure it's word-based. Well, how do I do that? You go find promises in the Bible that cover what you need from God. And, well, that might, you see, here's, here's the problem. Sometimes that just takes too much time because somebody wants to do the extra effort. No, go take the extra effort. Why? Because if you don't, there's no faith. Because if the word is not involved in it, there's no faith to accomplish it or to bring it to pass. So we've got to find scriptures that cover it. Amen? All right, let's run back over to first, uh, 2 Corinthians 1 and read from the Amplified. It says, as surely as God is trustworthy and faithful and means what he says. I, isn't it amazing how many people are running around saying you can't figure out what God, God meant exactly what he said. Yeah. They're always making up stuff about what God meant when he said when that which is perfect is come, that which is in, uh, in part should be done away with. They say, canonize of scripture, miracles left. If God knows how to say, if that's what it meant God said, he said, as soon as you get the whole Bible together, you won't be any more miracles. He didn't say that. And as a matter of fact, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and study out what Paul said, Paul said, when that which is perfect is come, I will know even as I'm known. Well, I've got the Bible and I don't know even as I'm known. Hello. He couldn't have been talking about the canon. No, he's talking about where John talked about when the Lord appeared, we will be as he is, we will see him as he is. At that point, we'll know him even as we're known. Okay? All right. Um, it means what he says. Our speech and message to you have not been yes. That might mean no. You know, in other words, we're saying yeah, but no, yeah, no, yeah. You ever done that with people? You say, yeah, but you really meant no. You going to be there tonight? Uh, yeah, but you really mean no, I ain't going to be there. I'm hedging on you. All right? For the Son of God, Christ Jesus, the Messiah who has been preached among you by us, by myself, Sylvanius, and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it is always the divine yes. Hallelujah. For as many as are the promises of God, they all find their yes, that is the answer, in him, in Christ. For this reason also we utter the amen. So be it to God through him in his person and by his agency to the glory of God. Saying, all saying the same thing, that God, when God made a promise, his answer was yes. When we approach it by faith, the answer is yes. When we speak it in faith, the answer is yes. It's never yes or no. God does not make promises and then hedge. Okay? That, that's why we need to find scriptures that promise, because the scriptures have, by default, the yes answer in them. So when you approach God and you bring his word to him, you're bringing back and confessing or declaring his answer, which is yes to this. He's already, he's already declared that it's a yes. He's already made, made it uh, clear that it's a yes. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we need to find scriptures that cover, that cover what we believe in God for. We need to make sure that we're standing in faith on them. Now, again, we need, when we find the scriptures, we need to feed on those scriptures. I got a scripture, I'm confessing, whoop, put it in there and you're done. It doesn't work, it, you know, honestly, it doesn't really work that way. You have to put it in, you have to meditate on it. So that light comes and revelation comes in accordance with that. And you'll know, you will know when the light comes. If I turn off the lights in this room, you will know when the lights are turned on. How can you explain that? I can't, it's hard to explain it to people if they, you know. It's hard to explain people what it's like when the light comes on. 
You have to experience it. But if you'll feed on the Word of God and stand on the Word of God and continue to look into the Word of God concerning promises of things you need and pray, and, and then the teacher, the Holy Ghost is your teacher. See, we, we sometimes forget the aid, the, the aid of the Spirit in being our teacher. He's called the teacher. How be it when the, te the paracletos, one of those is teacher. When he's come, he'll show you all things. Amen. And when he comes and begins to teach you, and revelation comes, it's, the light comes on, you don't have to, you, you may not even be explained, but you know what it is. Amen? So you'll know what it is. You could have an object out here, out here in, 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 a, in a really dark room with just a little faded backlighting, and you can't figure out it is, put a light on them right there, and you go, oh, <laughs> it's my husband. <laughs> Didn't recognize him in the dark. And that, could, that could be possible. Amen. Praise God. So, uh, at this point in, in, this, in what we're teaching them, we're going to pick up here next Sunday morning. And um, we're going we're to get one next Sunday morning. Nobody's going to want to hear, but I'm going to leave that alone right now. Okay, here you go. Be sure you're not living in sin. Now, listen, it's only one. <laughs> you know, out of all the ten points I have here, only two of them are what people call negative. The other eight are positive. But the two negative ones will mess you up. You can go get scriptures and live in sin and it'll mess it up. So we'll pick up on our next Sunday morning. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.